Romans chapter 5 again. Romans chapter 5. My title is Gleanings from Romans chapter 5. As my title suggests, I am not now going to try to go through this verse by verse or anything like that. What I mean by gleaning is I just want to pick up a truth here and there. Pick up things that are not directly dealt with in the text. For instance, here's a question. Why do men reject faith as a direct and personal gift of God? You understand that men and women do that today. Most of so-called Christianity does not believe that faith is a direct and personal gift from God. They believe faith is a general gift of God to all men, and all men can believe if they just will. Paul doesn't deal with that as a question in Romans chapter 5. But why is it that men reject faith as a direct and personal gift of God? So you see what I'm talking about gleaning here. There's some answers in Romans chapter 5. Number one, they reject faith as a direct and personal gift of God because they cannot see their enmity against God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God. Amen. Mankind in general does not believe he or she is an enemy of God. Exactly. Yeah. I had, had an individual tell someone we all know very well just uh, a week or so ago. Well, I deserve to be as loved as just as much as anybody else does. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's totally missing the truth. No one deserves the love of God. Amen. They cannot see their enmity against God. Paul goes on to say in chapter 8, the carnal mind is enmity against God because it's not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be and what is the reason for the law moreover in our text we read moreover the law entered that the offense might abound the law tells each and every individual that you have no standing before God Almighty in this world but not every individual sees that it takes the direct and personal gift of God, and that is faith, before any person will ever see their own enmity against God. Yes, sir. Not only is that a reason, but they hate the mediatorial uniqueness of Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Most may not mind that if they think, I'm, I'm not really God's enemy, but me and God does need something to kind of help fix us up together. But it even becomes more of an animosity toward fallen man when he reads, Therefore, being justified by faith, faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And only through him. Amen. By whom, not by what or by which, but by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Men reject faith as a direct and personal gift of God because they indeed hate Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Thirdly, they scoff the reason men and women reject faith as a direct and personal gift of God is because they scoff at God's sovereign reign in all things. Yes, sir. All things. Yeah. Have you ever heard it said in this day and age, how could a loving God oh, yeah. do this? Or how could a loving God allow that? How does a loving God allow sin in the universe? The problem is they even think it's a legitimate question. Exactly. Right. To question God is error and rebellion no matter what. Amen. 
They're trying to figure out who God is when God has clearly revealed who he is in this book. They scoff at God's sovereign reign in all things. And to them it's actually a legitimate question. But Paul here in our text is clear. While he's not trying to teach this in particular, he is teaching God's love is particular. What does he say in verse 8? But God commendeth his love toward us. Amen. Do you see that? But God commendeth his love toward us. And he goes on even further in Romans chapter 8 to say clearly that the love of God is found only in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You see, men glory in human faith. They don't mind a human faith, or at least a faith that's wrought out or wrought into being or, or coaxed along by human will. They glory in that kind of thing. But a God-given faith bows men and women to God as God in Christ Jesus in all things. So much so that it's not just therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we glory, we glory in tribulation also. That's a strong statement. Yes, sir. Now listen to what I'm about to say. I know it can be misunderstood. And I've been misunderstood before, sometimes rightfully so, because I probably did not state things accurately. And I am not going to say I'm stating this perfectly, but listen to me. Constant despair in trying circumstances flows from constant unbelief and distrust in God. That's just the way it is. That's what it is. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Why? Because we know tribulation works patience. Patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope makes not ashamed. Ashamed of what? It's not a what. It's a who. Amen. Because the love of God. Who's in control of tribulation? Amen. Who ordained tribulation? God did. So if I am in constant despair, it cannot be that I'm in but constant unbelief. This is why men and women must lay on the psychiatrist's couch and spill their beans to someone else. This is why they must take the drugs that basically does nothing more. It doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't change the circumstances. It doesn't make the trials any less. It just numbs the mind and the senses and the feelings to reality. You can get that out of a bottle of scotch. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. You don't even have to have a prescription for that. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I know God Almighty is God Almighty, and I love Him for being God Almighty, and I'm not ashamed of Him, then any constant despair, I said constant despair is because of constant unbelief. And a lack of love for him. That's just the way it is. Paul is not dealing with people here. Well, you're having trials and, and let me show you the problem here or the glory. That's not the whole, even the meaning. But that's what's taught. That's a gleaning here. Do you see what I'm saying? If faith brings me peace with God, and it does, through our Lord Jesus Christ, then that faith also teaches me what? To glory in tribulation. Because the sufferings of this world are not, and he goes on to say it, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Yes, sir. We've had a glory revealed to us already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For you and I to even be allowed to speak the name of God with the hope of love and mercy and compassion yes, is a gift of God. Yes, sir. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. So again, I say, as Paul, you know, remember, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I believe it is. Paul said, I was pressed above measure. I despaired. Yeah. But not forever. Not constantly. What did it do? 
because he had been given particularly and individually this gift of God called faith it forced him to flee to Jesus Christ if it forces you to flee to anything else it's unbelief Amen. That's, right. that's right if it forces you to flee to the bottle it's unbelief if it forces you to flee to the psychiatrist's couch, it's unbelief. Name it for what it is. Now, this is why I say people misunderstand. Well, you're saying if somebody's ever been to a psychiatrist or took some kind of psychotropic drug, that they're an unbeliever. No, I didn't say that. I'm saying call it for what it is. It's unbelief. Whether it's unbelief in me, unbelief in you, or unbelief in Paul the Apostle, either one. But there's one thing about those who've been given faith by the gift of God or as the gift of God. All things drive them eventually to Jesus Christ. Amen. All things. That's just the way it is. Here's another gleaning. Why do men reject with abhorrence? And I stress with abhorrence. Why do men object with, object with uh, abhorrence, absolute, particular, definite, assured reconciliation by Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. In other words, why do men reject that everyone for whom Christ died, he reconciled? And everyone he reconciled, they all shall be saved by his life. Yes, sir. It can't be because there is no clear testimony in Scripture. Scripture's not vague on this thing of particular redemption or definite redemption or limited atonement. Right. It's not vague on it. In our text, Romans 5, he states it clearly. Christ died and reconciled some people when he died. Yes, sir. And everyone he dies will be saved by his life. That's right. And that in turn guarantees that they're going to receive the reconciliation. And then he even goes on to show it by representative union. Yes, sir. Whoever Adam represented, they all fail. That's right. Whoever Christ represented, they're all raised up. Amen. Right? It's right here, clear in Scripture. So why do men reject with abhorrence absolute reconciliation? Now again, as I say, it's a gleaning. Paul's not dealing with it because some people weren't believing in limited atonement. But here's some reasons. It cannot, as I said, it cannot be a lack of scriptural evidence. It's right here in our text. And here's why. Here's why. They cannot see their utter strengthlessness. Yeah. Chapter 5, verse 6, For when we were yet without strength. There you go. Now anyone who says that a man has a free will, then says that man's will has some strength at least. Yeah. Yeah. Paul says... We were without strength. Exactly. Without strength. This is why men reject absolute, reject with abhorrence absolute reconciliation. You go tell somebody today, go out to Walmart, tell them Jesus Christ didn't die for the sins of everybody, and you see how they react to you. Oh, yeah. You're right. Most of them don't, don't even realize there's such a question. Exactly. Let alone an answer to it, and that the Bible's full of the answer. That's right. They'll look at you like you're cross-eyed or something. Oh, yeah. Or like you have a big wart on the end of your nose. The reason is they don't see their utter strengthlessness. They think Jesus is just there as an aid to help them to God. No, Peter said he had to bring us to God. Amen. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. You don't, you don't need Jesus to help you to God. He has to bring you to God. Amen. They cannot see their utter strengthlessness. Now, another, there's another one. They cannot taste, taste their enmity toward God. What did he say? He says, for if when we were enemies, enemies, most people think, well, they're really immoral people. They're enemies of God. Yeah. But do not get me wrong. The Apostle Paul is quite clear. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9, 10, 11, and 12 again. Yeah. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators, yeah. idolaters, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind. Go right on down the list. Yeah. 
Go right on down the list. But let me tell you something. Your immorality may well be a manifestation of your enmity against God too. Your morality may be. That's right. It was in those Pharisees, Joe. Yes, sir. Amen. They thought that their morality commended them to God. Yep. Now, we may say some men are immoral, some men are moral. But God doesn't call upon us to be moral. He demands we be righteous. Amen. That's it. You see? That's why immorality, morality, or what is it? Amorality. And none of it matters. That's not the point. Exactly. Now, I realize because I've just said that, there are those that say, well, I'll go ahead and be immoral. Well, you go ahead and be immoral. If you die immoral, you'll die and go to hell. Amen. That's right. I mean, there is no out with God. You may confound my language, but you won't confound God's truth. You, go. you may trip me up and get me to stuttering, but you won't get God to stuttering when you stand before him one day. That's right. As I said, the reason men reject with abhorrence absolute reconciliation is one, it's not because there's no scriptural evidence. It's, not, it's because they cannot see their utter strengthless, strengthlessness. They cannot taste their enmity against God. I t when I was driving to our worship service this morning, I could taste my enmity against God. Did you not? Now, maybe you didn't this morning, but I bet you did some morning. Huh? That if it were not for the sovereign hand of God upon me, I would turn with the most abhorrence toward everything that's good, everything that's pure, everything that's lovely, everything that's just, and I'd run my own way. I'd yeah. kick up and snuff at the wind like a wild ass's coat. Yeah. Amen. And you can do that in morality just as well as immorality. Right. Oh, yeah. You can do it in either one. Yeah. Either way. Right. That's right, Macy. Either way. Here's another thing. Another reason why men object with abhorrence, absolute reconciliation. They cannot see their spiritual death. Yeah. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And folks, that's spiritual death. Yes, sir. Physical death came as a result of the spiritual death. Yes, it was pronounced afterward. The spiritual death was pronounced as a result, a judgment of the eating of the fruit by Adam. Yes, and sir. that spiritual death fell on Adam that day that he ate of it. Yes, sir. Men cannot see their spiritual death. That's why they reject with abhorrence absolute reconciliation. Think of it. Men reject absolute reconciliation only when they cannot see their need of it. Yeah. Huh? Exactly. If you ever see that unless God Almighty does it all, yeah. it won't get done. As long as you think you can do one little part, then you'll seek to somehow lessen the work of Jesus Christ. Men reject absolute reconciliation only when they cannot see their own personal need of it. I mean, you can believe in the doctrine of limited atonement, but still think that you... you are receiving the blessings because you acknowledge the doctrine of limited atonement. You, if you have experienced the blessings of limited atonement, that is not limited in power, but limited in scope. If you have received the blessings of limited atonement, it happened to you in spite of you. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and not only that but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have received the reconciliation Amen. you don't receive it by free will or anything you receive it by him Amen. he wrought it and he gives it exactly. so I say again men reject it only because they don't see their need of it. When a man or a woman is shut up by God Almighty to shut up about themselves, then and then only are they ready receptors for the truth of God. <coughs> now, here's a prevalent thought today. Let me give you another gleaning. Joe kind of mentioned it. Go into a little bit more detail about it. 
There is a prevalent thought today. It's no longer, Joe, it's no longer even called the theory of evolution. Now, your words about theory and all that, it's, that's, that's fine. That's way, I'm not, I'm not going to argue that. But they don't even call it the theory of evolution anymore. Now it's the fact of evolution. They, 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 they get on TV and, and they, they purport it and, and they don't even call it a fact anymore. They think it's already understood by anybody that's got any sense. Evolution's a fact. Oh, yeah. sure. And if you don't believe that, you're just some kind of dodo bird. Yep. You're, 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 we're close to it. You're right on the cusp of being extinct. Maybe you are. Yeah. But listen to me. Listen to me. Here's a gleaning. Paul's not dealing with evolution here, is he? No, he's not dealing with evolution. Here's a gleaning. Here's a gleaning. Why do men so wholeheartedly swallow that and reject a literal Genesis account? Why is it? Here's why. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Amen. That's why they reject it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's not about empirical evidence. They don't have empirical evidence for evolution. Exactly. They say this thing started by a big bang. Where did the Big Bang come from? Exactly. Where did whatever banged come from? Exactly. And then you have these other quasi-Christians, or I probably should say pseudo-Christians, who try to meld the two together. Yeah. And maybe God just made a Big Bang, and the Big Bang they're hearing in this static noise was God when everything come into being. I don't know about all that. Yeah. I have no idea. But I do know this. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke the word, and day by day, 24-hour period, he spoke things into existence. Amen. And men reject that because of the outcome of what took place in that garden where that one man and one woman was. When Adam partook of that fruit, we all fell in him. And that's what they really hate. Yeah. That's, right. that's what they're trying to avoid. And let me tell you something, only a fool denies the universality of sin. There you go. Only a fool. That's right. You're right. If sin was not universal, there'd at least be one or two societies out there somewhere yeah. that are perfect. Yeah. There you go. And then the problem is, once we who are not perfect discover them, we would corrupt them. Yeah. But we know, we know that's not true. We begin to spread, and they even admit we kind of spread Mac over this earth. But what did we do? We took our sin with us. There you go. Didn't we? Yes, we? We took our sin with us. Only a fool denies the universality of sin. They want to act like sin is some kind of archaic thing. Yeah. Watch TV. Look at the news. Read the newspaper. Look online. It's everywhere. Yes, sir. Only a fool denies man's state in Adam. Yeah. Let me show you why. Like Adam... Still today, like Adam, we try to cover. That's the first thing Adam did after he fell. Remember? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Tried to cover himself. Yep. We're still doing it today. We use philosophy. We think we can think ourselves clothed. Oh, yeah. There is this innate sense of nakedness mm -hmm. before whatever there is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, now, I don't mean physically now. I'm talking about this nakedness of the heart and the mind and the soul. Oh, yeah. There's this innate sense of it, but just like Adam when he fell, what do we do? We construct something to try to cover ourselves. Exactly. We do it through a philosophy. We do it through education. They actually think they can educate bad out of people. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. We can educate bad out of people. Look at the education we have now in, in sin. We call it crime nowadays. And that's a good word for it, but it runs rampant. Oh, yeah. Doesn't it? It runs rampant. We think we can educate this sin away. Or human religion. We'll, we'll come up with a religion that suits us a little better. Doesn't speak quite so badly of ourselves. There you go. That's what we need. And yet, even then, just like with Adam, it's still not enough. You know why? Because like Adam, we go to try to hide amongst the trees of the garden. Yeah. Remember even after Adam and Eve made their fig leaf aprons? They heard the voice of God coming. And what they do? They went and hid themselves amongst the trees of the garden. Now, don't look for some great big... What were the trees of the garden? God's creation. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah.
So they then tried to say, realize my own personal work won't, won't do it. I still feel this innate sense of nakedness, even though Adam and Eve were clothed now, Joe. Oh, yeah. They knew this one coming here, yeah. this aprons, his fig leaf aprons, ain't going to cut it. So they went hid amongst the creation. That's right. We still do that today. We hide ourselves amongst our work. Yeah. Don't we? We apply ourselves to it. Some more honestly than others, granted, but we give ourselves to it. We give ourselves to entertainment or, or enjoying things. There's nothing wrong in, in and of itself with entertainment, is there? Nothing wrong with pleasures, but the problem is we try to hide amongst it. Exactly. We try to hide ourselves from God in the middle of it. But, but look, God, we're enjoying your creation. And we still run to human religion again. It's almost like we can't get rid of that. Now, I understand everybody's not like this. But remember, some are given over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Remember, some have their consciences seared with a hot iron. So at one time, Joe, they had a conscience that could feel these things. But even then, even when you feel it, you always do the wrong thing. Yeah. A fig leaf apron, don't cut it. Hiding amongst the trees, it don't cut it. Yeah. Does it? He's the God who created all this. Amen. And you know what? Even then when we're caught red-handed, Adam was caught red-handed, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Wasn't he caught red-handed? Yes, sir. Wasn't he? And even today, when man's caught red-handed, what does he then do? What's the third thing Adam did? Yeah. He tried to blame God. Yeah. The woman you gave me. Exactly. Now there's your reason for hating men, yeah. women. And this is the why, reason why men hate women. Mm -hmm. Not because of the woman, but because we hate God. Exactly. Hmm? There you go. The woman thou gavest me. You see the little innuendo there? Huh? You see it? Yeah. Mm. We try, you know, Adamic corruption's not real after all, don't you know? Oh, yeah. This is just kind of a hiccup of evolution. Really? Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Think of it. Fallen, corrupt God haters tout man's ascent, not his immediate descent in Adam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Evolution teaches we are growing up. Going up, going up, going up, right? We, we began as a little, as Earl used to say, an amoeba with a wart on it, and it turned into a leg or something, you know? We began as this little old thing, and it just all kind of expanded and kept it, and it's getting more glorious and glorious. You know, and the only thing that stands in the way now? The earth ain't going to last as long as we might. Right? So now it's saved the earth. Right? Oh yeah. Now, folks can you know I, I'm I'm no I'm no scientist by any means. I'm not a I'm not a medical doctor, but I do know this: God Almighty called me to preach His gospel, yeah. and by His grace, I do know some of the gospel, yeah. and I do know what His truth says when He says it plain out. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. How in that one man He goes on in detail to say that's true. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. There's your answer for all this. Yes, sir. Think of it. They say we're ascending, not descending. And it was a, our descent is not gradual. We're not, they don't even say, well, no, but man's evolved so far, now we're devolving. They don't even teach that, do they? Our only problem is we need more education. We need to teach ourselves better. We need, need more philosophy. We need to just get along with love. Yeah. Let's just get along with love. That's the little, trying to ask the lion to love the gazelle. He does. Yeah. He loves it for food. There you go. He doesn't love it as a companion. He loves it for food. That's right. And that's just the way it is. And we love our sin like food. We drink it, what is it? We drink up iniquity what? Like water. Yes, sir. Like water. Amen. We have and are not evolving. Yeah. We're not evolving. We're not even devolving. Yeah. We fail in Adam in the garden. Evolution is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. 
They will never scientifically prove it right. You're right. I will make that bold statement. They will never scientifically prove it right. All they can do is lie about it. And every now and then, like Joe said, they get caught in their own lies. But remember, they don't remind you about their lies. They sell it. They'll give it in a Time magazine in a three lines of a great big three-piece paper. We were wrong here. We thought this back yonder. We found out now we're wrong. And then they forget about it. Exactly. I don't trust them in any of it. Exactly. That's it. Here's the question. Why should I? They're not seeking the truth of God. They're seeking to exalt man and dethrone God. I mean, I had a quote from a scientist. He said, our main problem in this world is this, God and sin. That's our problem. God and sin. Not that God existed. He don't believe God. It's the idea of God. And the idea of sin is somehow an offense against God. He said, if we could wipe those things out, society would be much better. The man's a fool. You got that right. Because if we did, we would be like the beast of the earth and devour one another wholeheartedly. Exactly. That's it. Their main concern now, as I said, is the planet not lasting as long as we do. That's right. Somebody says, you don't care about the planet. I really don't. Do you hear me? This planet's not my home. Exactly. My home is a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Now, does that mean I ought to foul my nest? As Earl, you say, no. But let me tell you, this earth is waxing old like a garment, and you cannot stop it, and I cannot stop it. The Republicans can't stop it, and the Democrats can't stop it, and the Independents can't stop it. It will not be stopped. God will wipe this thing out one day. Amen. And we, with some God-given wisdom, may we use it, not abuse it, but may we use it. But let's use it. That's what it's here for. But you see, if you, if you believe you evolved from an amoeba, what else you got to look forward to? Huh? That's it. Let me sum it up. God's Word has full veracity. Amen. Full veracity. Paul didn't just fall into the old thing. Well, there was this actual little. It's a literal creation because it was literally created. And when you read this book, take it literally, unless the book lets you know within its very context that it's speaking otherwise. Yeah, that's it. Amen. Yeah. I'm serious. I don't care if it's Revelation chapter 20 and it has to do with the thousand years of the millennium. You better take it exactly like it says it, unless it gives you full reason not to. Amen. Exactly. For reason, the thing is speaking metaphorically, symbolically. I hear people, well, let's spiritualize we, it. Maybe they can spiritualize that. There is no such thing. That's right. You don't spiritualize. You don't, you don't have the breath of life. There you go. Only God can breathe spirit. There you go. And God doesn't, you know, the, the opposite of spiritual is not literal. Somebody says, well, that's spiritual, not literal. Listen, I'm, there are even grace people who are falling into that trap. Yeah, right. The opposite of spiritual is what? Carnal. Yeah, the opposite of literal is symbolic. There you go. Yeah. Now, I'm not the brightest bulb in the pack, but I know that much. God's word has, I didn't say it's full of veracity, I said God's word has full veracity. It is the truth. Men and women rest it, they twist it, they ignore it, they deny it, they avoid it, they mock it. Yet, let God be true and every man a liar. Father, oh, God, teach us these things. And God, <clears throat> bow us down to your Son. Bow us to your Word. Bow us to your authority. And God calls us to love it. I ask it in Christ's name. 
Amen.